Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video, just for fun, I'll be shooting a roll of Tri-X 400 speed film in my vintage Pentax K1000. I decided to carry the camera over a period of a few weeks and shoot whenever I had a chance. I have the Pentax Super Multicoated 50mm F2. This lens doesn't appear to be one of the radioactive ones, but a lot of the vintage Pentax lenses were radioactive. In fact, if you use vintage lenses, you should probably Google this because there are quite a few vintage lenses made by all kinds of brands, including Kodak, that were made with thorium. Some of them are actually quite radioactive. I also have a 135mm lens, but I'm not really using that for this video. It's been quite a while since I made a film video, and once in a while I enjoy taking out an old camera to shoot a roll of film because it brings you back to the basics and I always think if you want to find out how much you really suck as a photographer you should just go shoot some film. The K1000 was manufactured from 1976 until 1997. A lot of people use it as a beginner camera because it's such a sturdy and bare bones tool. It was a student camera for a lot of photography students back in the day. I never owned one back then but one of my friends shot on this very same model. It got the 1000 in the K1000 moniker because that's its top shutter speed one one thousandth of a second. Something else to know is there's not a self timer either so if you want to use it on a tripod you'll need to use a shutter release cable. This one has a built-in light meter but I don't have the battery so I'm going without the light meter and just using the light meter app on my phone. But the camera works just fine without a battery otherwise. From what I can discern this serial number was made in the years 1982 to 1983 and with the same 50 millimeter lens it would have cost about $220 as a kit probably made in Hong Kong. The combo now runs maybe $160 on eBay. All right, let's get started shooting. I love that heavy mechanical shutter sound. Ah, the joys of urban photography. These are a bunch of antique farm machines that have been collected here in a sort of museum exhibit. I like the juxtaposition of using a vintage camera to make photographs of vintage machines. I love all the textures, that old wood, the rusty metal. I like to come over here with a macro lens and shoot close-ups of the rust in the wood grains from time to time. This is me trying to read the aperture ring. My old eyes are just not as good as they used to be.
This basic little workhorse camera is a lot of fun to use. I was enjoying it. I decided to take the Pentax on a hike in the woods, even though the light was really harsh. I photographed this old stone wall quite a few times. It's one of my favorite places to hike out in the woods. I have to admit there's something quite nostalgic and simple about walking around with just a little 35mm camera dangling on my shoulder. It reminds me of my high school days. Anyways, here I am channeling Imogen Cunningham. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you a print of this photograph and maybe one or two others. Here I'm using a tripod and natural light to make a still photograph of this box of dead roses that I've saved for making photographs. Usually I shoot one blossom at a time, but here I'm using the entire box. I also tried a single flower. Don't make fun of my makeshift studio, okay? This tool is designed for floral photography. It holds stems in place for shooting. I'll put a link in the description if you think this might help you in some of your work. Now we're in the final sequence. I was on my way to Hollow Rock, which is a location you may have seen in a previous video. Along the way, I spotted this roadside location and decided to stop and shoot it with the Pentax.
Before I show you the prints, I thought I might give you a sneak peek at a few of the negatives. Okay, y'all, here's the first print that I made from these negatives. I thought I'd just give you a look at how the grain translated into a digital print and also the sharpness. These are printed on Hanamula Photorag Barita paper. I think they look really great. From a 35 millimeter negative, I probably wouldn't print too much larger than this, maybe uh, up to 16 by 20, but probably no larger than uh, 11 by 14. Since there's so much black in this print, the iPhone's blowing out the highlights, but in the print, those highlights are actually intact. They're not blown out. It also looks a little warmer here than it actually is. It's quite neutral. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at keithdotson.com.